back to week 15 of the NFL. This is beat on TV. And I'm going to tell you, he's going he's gonna to lose. All right, first game on Thursday night. It's going to be the Broncos and the Colts. It's got to be the Broncos. Next one, we're going to go Bears and Lions. This is a tough one. My boy, North Carolina boy, Mitchell Trubisky, is all right, but he's not good enough for the Lions and Darius Slay leading their defense. I'll take the Lions. Now we're going, ooh, Chargers and Chiefs. Mm, this is, I like the Chargers this week. I like the Chargers in the NFL. I like the Chargers for the AFC West. They're going places. The Chiefs are not. I mean, they won a game last week, but it doesn't really have any significance. I don't even think the Chiefs are going to make the wild card spot this year, so give me the Chargers. Ooh, okay. Chargers win, Chiefs lose. We're going Jets and Saints. It's got to be the Saints. Sounds good. Josh McCann's out. Yeah, you can't really look at that. Texans and Jaguars. Jaguars got a really good defense. Give me Jacksonville. All right. Eagles, Giants. Ooh, it's going to be a blue game. No, it's not. No, no we got a two in the uh, week 15. A two in 11 or two in 12 team playing against the Eagles. So yeah, could be for the Giants. How? The Giants are eager for a win. They've been eager for one all season. Put, give me the final right. Eagles. Go. All right, Dolphins and Bills. I picked the Dolphins. All right. Ooh, the Dolphins. They had a nice win last that week. That matchup, Jay Cutler, you're sick. I'm voting you for the Pro Bowl. You don't deserve to be there, but I'd love to see you there. Show up. Okay. They like you. Okay. Uh, Ravens and Browns. Uh, Ravens. Duh. Yeah. I mean, their defense. I'm 13. Solid. Them. The Bills and the Vikings. Uh, it's obviously me and Vikings. The Vikings are really good. Wait, no, things. Bengals, sorry, Bengals. Well, they're still the Vikings, it doesn't change anything. Oh, uh, it's going to be Cardinals, Redskins. This is going to be kind of close. Two teams that aren't that good. Yeah. But give me the Cardinals. In Washington. In Washington. In Washington. The Washington is devastated by the Show up, my week. guy. All right. Now, uh, we're going to the Packers and the Panthers. It's got to be the Panthers. I mean, the Panthers are just kings of the AFC right now. Almost kings of the AFC right now. There's a lot of kings of the, sorry, yeah. NFC. There are like four different NFC teams. Eagles, mm. almost. Carson Wentz, where you at? Mm. And then we got the Saints, Saints Rams, Falcons, and Panthers. Panthers. And, and Minnesota. And that's what I meant. So yeah. it's not Falcons. Right. Continue. All right. Uh, ooh, it's going to a late night game. It's going to be the Rams and the Seahawks. It's not a late night game. Oh, it's, it's not a late night, but California. it's a little late game. Oh, true. Uh, in Seattle, my bad. In Seattle. We're going to say the Seattle because the Seattle, the Seattle the Seahawks, Seattle. because of their experience. They're a really good team. And I like Russell Wilson's play creating ability. Yeah, they have them good. Ooh, Patriots and Steelers. Uh, game of the week, AFC duking it out. The Patriots coming off a loss. They're not gonna. They're not gonna lose two in a row. They never lose two in a row. The Patriots. Yeah. All right, so we're going to Titans forty nine ers. It's gonna be the Titans. Yes, it is. No question. Mm -hmm. no question. Cowboys Raiders. Ooh. 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 I just feel like the Cowboys are playing better football this season with or without Zeke Elliott. You got Alfred Morris. That's a solid backup. Derek Carr hasn't shown me anything special like he did last year at Mario Cooper. Let's see something. Give me the Cowboys. Cowboys. The yeah, final Monday night matchup. I'm taking the Atlanta Falcons over the eliminated Buccaneers. Yeah. That is it for NFL picks. But there's something very big coming up. It's week 15, which means it's the last week of fantasy uh, football for people who made the playoffs. If you're going to lose. So... What you want to do to not lose is you're going to want to start Kenyon Drake, running back for the Dolphins. Pick him up if he's not already picked up. You're going to want to start Keenan Allen. You're going to want to go out and get him if somehow he's not, or he hasn't already been picked. What else do you want to do? Big points. Big points waiting for Rob Gronkowski. He's just an absolute monster. Pittsburgh, uh, deep defense has been below average. Yeah, Rob coming off a game of rest. So we're going to want to start him. He's basically a wide receiver in disguise as a tight end, in disguise as a linebacker's body. He's just an all-around beast. 
So, let me give you, let me, let's start something new. Let's start the two impact players of the week. It's a, I'm not saying they're going to put up the most fantasy points, but they're going to have the biggest impact on the NFL this week. Impact players of the week. Number one, Russell Wilson. Very experienced quarterback. Very good quarterback. He's been in the Super Bowl a handful of times, which is a handful more than the Chargers. But maybe we'll make it this year. And he's playing against a... Talented Rams. Talented Rams team, but it's just not enough for him. And my other impact player is going to be Alex Collins coming out against the Browns. He's just... You put up 24 fantasy points, I think. A touchdown and over 100 yards rushing for Alex Collins, if I'm not mistaken. He's a very good player. Irish look for him to grow and look for him to make a big impact on the Ravens trying to make a playoff push. Now, my sleeper, who no one thinks he's gonna, no one thinks he's gonna um, put on a performance, is my boy Marquise Lee on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Blake Bortles is all right, but he's gonna be able to get the ball to a target like Lee. He's gonna put up major yards against the Texans. And in other sports news, Manchester City, my other team. Wow, what a good sports year for me. Just set the Premier League record for most consecutive wins. Uh, that is fifth. Beat Chelsea. That is. I'm sorry. No, well, we beat Chelsea a while ago. Right? What? So we'll leave this to me for now because this is my, oh, this is my segment. So you can just look at the camera or you can exit that way. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so. I'd rather someone say the headline. My segment. Manchester City won their 15th consecutive game. 15 consecutive games. And scored 45 points over 15 games. Sets a record for Manchester or for not only Manchester City, but for Premier League all-time consecutive wins. Just after Chelsea tied the record last season. That is dominance. David Silva is a part of that. Kevin De Bruyne is a part of that. Uh, Raheem Sterling is a part of that. There's not a better midfield in soccer right now than Manchester City, and that'll prove in Champions League when they go very, very far and make it to the finals, if not win the finals. And then in the NBA, we got Paul George, came back to Indiana, uh, got booed for some reason, even though he got traded. But, you know, it's whatever. Fans are kind of, like, confusing sometimes. Victor Oladipo did not play a great game, even though he's a hero in... Indiana. He's a really good player. I think that he's going to take him to the playoffs this year in a weak Eastern Conference. And you can see the Thunder starting to regain or rebound from a couple of their losses early in the season. They're starting to get better after being not so better. And in MVP race, we got James Harden lit it up against the Pelicans. Like, I was watching the game, it looked like he couldn't miss. Like, he just got the ball. He scored it every time. Whether it was a step-back three-pointer, attack the paint. He was attacking defenders. He was playing defense, which a lot of people criticize him for not doing. He had, I think, six steals and a few blocks, a pair of blocks. So, right now he's looking to be like the MVP. Even though Giannis had a good start to the season, LeBron's playing well. Right now, if the season ends today, I would take James Harden. And finally, to cap it off, what stinks in hockey is the Senators and the Red Wings. The Red Wings experienced a overtime loss to the Boston Bruins last night. Uh, Marchand scored the game winner, and it was it, it was ugly. They were up one one nothing, and they just blew a lead. Um, the defense was terrible toward the last period, and they can't. I think they've dropped thir- twelve of their last thirteen games. It's not looking good in Detroit. It's not looking good for another rebound playoff appearance after breaking their streak last year of 25-some consecutive appearances. And another team that stinks is the Ottawa Senators. Guys, you need to clean up your act. If you're going to make the playoffs, you need to fire someone. You need to take someone off your team because all your stats in the past 13 games are worse than the NHL for offensive, I think, goal scored, um, time of possession, Something like that. I saw a graphic. Maybe we'll put it up. Maybe we won't. And what doesn't stink right now is the Las Vegas Golden Knights. This is a brand new team. 
this year, first Las Vegas sports franchise. The Golden Knights are going to the playoffs, and I think they're going to make a surprisingly far run. Marc-Andre Fleury is going to see the Penguins again. I'm predicting that one's going to be a very close one. I think the Golden Knights are going to edge it out in overtime. Count on it. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have any suggestions on sports you want us to cover, uh, athletes you want us to cover, anything else in between, comment below. Comment below your predictions, if we helped you, and we'll see you next time.